Hello. As I'm sure you know, IPCs these days are more and more often not cultured in 2D, in T flasks like this, or in six flow plates like this, but instead in suspension, in shape flasks, or in spinner flasks, or when it comes to the larger culture volumes in bioreactors. In these suspensions, these IPCs form what is called aggregates. That's balls of cells that grow and change shape over time. These processes take days to weeks to complete. And as always, with these long running, high value processes, it's good to know what's going on. So people tend to take samples of their 3D cultures and then put them on a microscope to, to look at their aggregates. This, for example, is an image from our Vader microscope, a phase contrast, a digital phase contrast image. And from an image like this, you can tell the number of the aggregates in your, your suspension, but also the size and whether the, the aggregates are nice and round or elongated or stuff like that. Now, wouldn't it be nice if it was possible to measure all these things automatically so you could get the area, the roundness, the elongation of your aggregates, not just for one or a few aggregates, but for a whole bunch of them and thus get real statistics about your cell culture. Well, there is a way, and it's called image segmentation. Using either classical computer vision techniques or machine learning, an image like this can be segmented into areas that are background and areas that are aggregates in this case, black and red in the example. Now, a segmentation like this makes it really easy and just a matter of road coding to get all the shape parameters you want for each of these red, road, red regions here. As I said, Something like this can, in principle, be implemented using classical computer vision algorithms. Of course, the alternative for people like me who'd rather let the computer do all the work, there's machine learning. And I'm going to show you how this can be implemented by anyone using our Vader system. Uh, of course, the uh, same techniques, the same principles apply uh, to any sufficiently powerful imaging and machine learning solution. One of the nice things about doing this with Vader is that it comes with the very intuitive labeling UI that lets you select images and then segment them by hand, which just means that you draw on them. So you select your images, then label a couple, usually not more than one or two, and then uh, give the computer a chance to try to learn to match what you did. In the next step, you correct its performance on another couple of images and give, them, give it another chance. You rinse and repeat until you're happy with the results. Now, specifically with these aggregates, one thing that happens is a little intuitive. And what, what happens is this, uh, during the first rounds of iteration, uh, often the inner parts of the aggregates are classified as background. And that's a little un unintuitive, a little unexpected for the human observer because we think that's really easy to tell apart. Uh, but this only is unintuitive until you realize that the AI really looks at or tends to look at very small regions to determine what they are. And in fact, the texture of the inner part of an aggregate is actually very, very similar to the texture of the background. Anyway, nothing that a few rounds of dedicated corrections and training don't fix. In the end, you'll end up with pretty accurate, pretty robust segmentation of your aggregates. Now, when we apply our new segmentation to a lot of images and try to quantify the shapes of our aggregates, every now and then we run into a problem. Check out this image and its segmentation as an example. What you see is that the aggregates touch. And so the red regions for these aggregates uh, run into each other. And what you get for one pair of touching aggregates is one large region, uh, one large red region instead of uh, a few smaller ones. Of course, we want the size and roundness and so on, not of these large objects, but of the small objects that correspond to individual aggregates. Now, what you have to do is to apply a trick. And the trick is, not to segment your image into aggregates and background, but instead into aggregates, border region, and background. And what you get looks like this. Nicely segmented regions, even for touching aggregates. Of course, this trick has its limits. 
check out this example. As you see, there are just too many places where aggregates touch each other, and that means too many opportunities for even a very well-trained AI to get it wrong. And that means just too many cases uh, where you get readings not for individual aggregates, but for lumps of aggregates. Worse though, what you also see is that in some places, the aggregates actually pile on top of each other, and then it becomes impossible, even logically, to segment this image into regions that belong to only one aggregate at a, at a time. Then again, if these aggregates are this close, they actually squish each other. And then the area that represents each aggregate is different from what it would be if each aggregate were uh, imaged separately. So better avoid the situation. Some touching of aggregates is fine, but generally try to dilute your sample so these aggregates have space and also make sure you image fast enough, image quickly enough, so surface tension doesn't move them uh, in one big pile of aggregates. Anyway, with microscopy and data analysis automated as an evader system, image segmentation can give you robust and objective morphological readouts of your bioreactor samples quickly. Use this for protocol development, protocol optimization, process control, and for publication purposes, of course. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Visit us on LinkedIn or our website, or if you like, drop us an old-fashioned email. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.